Hi guys, it's David here from Right On Resources and today we're going to be having a look at the fantastic new novel by Stephen King called Billy Summers. Now this video is going to give us a very quick spoiler free review and reading log about the novel. We're going to talk about some of the pros, some of the cons and some of the processes that Stephen King has gone through to make this a really effective novel. Okay, so we'll just have a look at a very quick overview of the novel and talk about the main thing that it focuses on and the main thing you're going to find when you come to read this book. So the novel focuses on the character of Billy Summers. He's an ex-army sniper and a gun for hire. He describes himself as a garbage man with a gun. So he only kills people who fits into uh, what he deems as bad men. So anyone that kind of contradicts his own moral code, he's willing to kill. If they don't meet that criteria, he will not do the job. So he's quite a likeable character. He's actually quite a good character, despite the fact that he is uh, someone who is profiting from murder. Um, he won't go after women or children. So he's got a very kind of typical uh, hero-esque kind of moral code. And some might argue that is slightly a bit of a cliche, right? You think about things like Dexter or any number of novels where we have someone that's doing something quite bad, but ultimately doing it for an overall good moral purpose. Um, the book is uh, a very, very captivating read. It's only uh, just over 400 pages long, so it isn't by any means a particularly long novel, and it is definitely something I think you should have a look at. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at it in a little bit more depth. So when we look at the structure of this novel, we find that it's actually quite an interesting structure. So the novel might be considered to be a tale of two halves. The first half of the novel details a lot of Billy's um, preparation in order to actually get ready for the assassination attempt. He talks about his concerns about the assassination, the fact that this is going to be his very last job, the one that hopefully sets him up for a deep, for a good and comfortable retirement. And the second half. Uh, it's where we really get introduced to this character of Alice. And this is a really, really good character because she is able to work really well in the novel uh, and kind of break Billy down to a more personal level, right? Billy is kind of, uh, seems to be quite cold, quite calculating at the start. Um, he's able to form relationships, he's able to blend in with his environment, but ultimately that was all done just to make sure that he was doing his job appropriately, that he weren't above suspicion before he took his shot. Um, the structure is very interesting as well because um, as part of his disguise, Billy is pretending to be a writer. Now, if any of you have followed anything of Stephen King's before, uh, if you've seen his, his book that's half a biography, half really a uh, uh, almost a guide for writing, his memoir, you might say, uh, Stephen King on writing, you'll know that he's very, very into the process and fascinated by the process that writers go through uh, in within their craft. And we see little glimpses of that in the actual novel. So Billy is someone who is uh, masquerading as a writer in order to get the lay of the land, in order to integrate himself within the society. And as such, he actually starts writing himself. Now through that, that helps us understand Billy a lot more. We get this fantastic flashback where we learn about Billy's own personal experiences and the real horrors and uh, tribulations that he experienced throughout the war in Iraq. Um, this is really interesting because it is something that we weren't really expecting at the start of the novel. And towards the end of it, we get a more wholesome understanding of the character of Billy. And he's a very likable and relatable character um, that just grows and develops really nicely throughout the duration of the book. So um, a lot of Stephen King's uh, novels have links to other characters or other books that he's read. Now there isn't really a massive link to anything else uh, that is read in here. The only other reference you get is from the Overwatch Hotel. So if anyone has uh, heard of that before, it comes in The Shining and also in Doctor Sleep. So this is only uh, very briefly mentioned towards the uh, second half of the book where they come within contact of that. Now, it doesn't really have a massive effect on it. It may be kind of uh, is used to create a sense of the paranormal, but it's not something that has a big impact within the novel. If you're a little bit unsure about Stephen King, sometimes um, I know people can struggle with some, some of his books. Sometimes that can be a little bit too intense or a bit too scary for a few people. If you enjoyed um, his book about the JFK assassination, so 11... 2263 then you might get on with this novel quite nicely it's got a very very similar tone very similar feel and the portrayal of the um, 
American society is very typical of the writing that was in there. And it really speaks to Stephen King's love and admiration for a certain aspect of American society. OK, so I haven't really got many things to say in terms of criticism for this novel. Uh, there's a few things that I know will irritate a few readers. So one of the biggest things that will irritate people in this novel is the references here to Donald Trump. Now, as someone who is British, someone who aren't really that uh, fussed about Donald Trump is someone that uh, most people within England, I think, find him just more of an irritating presence. Uh, if anyone's actually followed King, though, on his Twitter account, you will know that he's constantly trying to make uh, references towards Donald Trump, and he's done this throughout the novel as well. There's maybe six or seven references to Donald Trump, and uh, he does this as kind of a satirical way just to get his political views across. So if you're someone who'd rather have your politics away from the things you read, then this might be something that irritates you. But again, it's no reason not to pick the book up. It just might be something that might make you cringe every now and again. Um, another thing that is mentioned in the book is he tends to criticise people who are heavier set quite a bit. Um, there's a person who Billy actually works with who's posing as his literary agent. And um, he's constantly talking about him in a very derogatory way because of the man's weight and stature. Uh, that doesn't bother me personally, but I know it might be something that might bother people who uh, don't like it when people, you know, attack our people's physical appearances. So our overall verdict then. So uh, Billy Summers is a compelling, engaging read that portrays the reality of war, unlikely friendships and a heartwarming betrayal of the American people. There's almost an overwhelming sadness to the protagonist that is uh, lightened only by the presence of the character Alice halfway through the novel. Um, for me, this was really refreshing to have that character of Alice. I found it uh, a little bit hard going in the first half. I found the fact that it was just Billy counting down the days to some extent of the day of the assassination, waiting around. I thought that was going to get quite old quite quick. However, it wasn't something we have to deal with that much as a reader. It's something that only lasts for a quite a short amount of time. I was actually surprised how quick things developed to get into uh, the action. Um, in terms of uh, modern writing, I think this will be a fantastic standalone novel that a lot of people will really get a lot of enjoyment from. Um, it was something that I found really easy to read. The time just flew and there were some moments in the book that really were able to capture my imagination and really made me engage with the characters and really kind of hope that we see some of those characters again in his future writing. So in terms of um, whether we think we should read that book or not, I think it is an absolute must read. If you are someone who are a, a devout Stephen King fan, I'm sure you've probably seen or heard about the book before, but you should know that it is very different from a lot of the other books that he's written. It's very similar to things like Mr. Mercedes and again, the one about JFK as well. So if you like those kind of books, then definitely give this a try. If you like this review, if you found it helpful, then please do like and subscribe. We'll be uploading a video at least once a week, so please do check us out for that. Okay, thank you. Bye.